Welcome to statics. Moment of a force about a specified axis. When we find the moment of a force, the direction of that moment is perpendicular to the plane defined by the force in its moment arm. Sometimes what we want is the moment about a specific axis rather than the full moment that's perpendicular to that plane. The component of the moment along a specific axis is referred to as a projection. We find it using the same method that we used when we were projecting a force vector onto an axis. That is, we use the dot product. Let's look at an example. Here's the bent bar that we considered previously. It has a force acting on it in a random orientation. Here's the resulting moment vector acting at point O. It is perpendicular to the plane shown. Suppose that what we really want is not the moment at some random orientation, but instead the moment about the z axis, or it could be any other axis that we can define. There are some reasons why we would want to find the component of the moment about another axis. We'll talk about that in a minute. First, let's look at how we do it. Suppose that we want to find the component of a moment vector, mo, projected on an axis we'll call a. We define ua as a unit vector oriented in the direction of axis a. The magnitude of the projected component, ma, is found by dotting unit vector ua and moment vector mo. Here's a reminder of how we perform the dot product with Cartesian vectors. So I can write an equation for vector ua dot vector mo like this. Remember that the dot product produces a scalar result which here is the magnitude of the projected moment component. We can convert it to a vector by multiplying magnitude ma by the unit vector ua, shown like this. Let's go back to our example of the bent bar. Here is vector fba in Cartesian notation. To get the moment about point O, I form a position vector from point O to a point on the line of action of the force. I will take it to point A, since I know the geometry of my bar. I can get the moment vector by finding the determinant of the matrix, and here it is. The image shows the orientation and direction of the moment. Let's zoom in to the base of the structure. Here's the base of our bar in a cutaway view. If we were designing this bar to be strong enough to resist the applied force, then we would want to know all the forces and moments acting at the support. Our moment vector, in its current form, is not particularly useful, as you will see when you take your Mechanics of Materials course, where we learn how to analyze internal stresses in structures, it is much more convenient to project this moment vector into components along other axes. For example, the component about the z-axis would be the torque on the bar, causing shearing stresses. The components about the y and x-axes would be bending moments, causing tension and compression stresses we would need to design this bar to be able to withstand those stresses. So let's project the moment vector onto the z-axis so that we can find the torque at the support. We will use the dot product. We find the magnitude of the moment about the z-axis by dotting a unit vector in the z-direction with our moment vector. Here is a unit vector for the z-axis, 0i, 0j, and 1k. Here is our moment vector that we previously found. The dot product operation will be the sum of the products of the like components in our two vectors, like this. We get a magnitude of 902 newton meters. I can find the z-axis vector by multiplying the magnitude by the unit vector. We get 902 k newton meters. Now, we can get the magnitude of our projected vector about a specified axis from the force and position vectors in a single step. Here's our basic dot product equation. The moment vector is the position vector cross the force vector, which we can get as the determinant of this matrix. We can rewrite the first equation by substituting in R cross F, and we can revise our matrix by substituting in the unit vector components for I, J, and K. Let's see that in our example. Here are the force, position, and unit vectors for our example. I put the values into the matrix and find the determinant by taking the minors with negative j. Here is the math expanded. 
Since the i and j components of the unit vector are both zero, then those terms are zero. We only get the z component contributing here. Simplifying the equation gives us the same magnitude as before. This example was fairly basic, since our projected axis was the z-axis. But this method works for projecting a moment vector about any axis we can define with a unit vector.